Our next speaker is John Jaramillo. Jaramillo is graduating with a PhD in Romance Languages and is an instructor of Spanish. <laughs> he is a proud non-traditional student, finishing his bachelor's degree at 50 years of age and his PhD at 61 years. <laughs> His, his dissertation, titled Viral Bodies, AIDS, and Other Contagions in Latin American Life Narratives, delves into the cultural representation of AIDS in 1990s Latin America. Please welcome John. Thank you very much. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the College of Arts and Sciences Dean's Office for granting me this unique opportunity to speak today. I would also like to thank the University of Oregon and various campus organizations such as the Center for the Study of Women in Society, the Center for uh, Latino and Latin, Latina and Latin American Studies, the or Oregon Center for Translation Studies, Global Oregon, and the Latin American Studies Program. Their generous financial and intellectual support allowed me to conduct research in Argentina and Chile, complete significant portions of my dissertation without teaching obligations, and pursue creative endeavors in translation studies, culminating in the publication of my first novel in translation. As we gather here today for um, the graduation ceremony, celebrating accomplishments in the humanities, social sciences, and STEM fields, I am deeply honored to address you at this auspicious occasion. With approximately uh, 80 PhD and over 100 MA graduating um, graduates here today, I am amazed by the breadth and depth of the knowledge represented in the extensive list of disciplines and the titles of your final projects. Listen to just a few captivating titles. Representations of active vision by Wesley Rosales in biology. Hydropoetics, myth, reality, and literature in the Eastern Nile Basin by Yewulse uh, Shittai, um, Odalu, in complet, the multifaceted nature of identity, cognitive constraints, economic development, and social networks by Han Yong Huan in economics. Wash yourself white, race and hygiene, and environmental justice in 20th century U.S. multi-ethnic women's working class literature by Cassandra Galantine in English. Unsettled Ecologies, Alienated Species, Indigenous Restoration, and U.S. Empire in a Time of Climate Change by Lisa Fink in Environmental Science. Material, maternal Stress, Family Functioning, and Child Well-Being According to Latina, Latinx Mothers with Young Children by Ana Carolina Hernandez in Psychology. Memories of Betrayal and the Betrayal of Memory, Narratives of the Defeat in Chile and Argentina by Yosa Vidal Collados in Romance Languages. Off-Time Illness, When Young Adults Get Ill Illnesses Associated with Old Age by Catherine Norton Smith in Sociology. And these are only a handful of the close to 100 theses and dissertations defended this academic year in our college. Congratulations on the interdisciplinary hybridity showcased in nearly all your theses and dissertations. Your formidable contributions are essential for the societal healing and humane transformations our world so desperately needs. Now that we have reached this significant milestone in our intellectual journeys, it is an opportune moment to ponder a, a crucial question. In a world threatened by animus towards race, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, and indigeneity, what does it mean to hold an MA or a PhD? It means that we possess critical tools that allow us to perceive more clearly 
ask comfortable, uncomfortable questions, and propose innovative approaches to address persistent social problems. I urge all of you to have unwavering confidence in the intrinsic value of the knowledge we produce. Do not be disheartened by the resurgence of nationalist and authoritarian discourses. The renewed efforts to ban books and the intensification of the culture war against women, people of color, and LGBTQIA. Those who prosecute such actions represent a minority that seeks to redefine and stigmatize our most celebrated attribute into an epithet of derision. Our commitment to social justice, to being woke, is not a failed experiment. It is an ongoing journey. We may seem to be walking in the shadow of death, but take courage. Finding your voice and confronting injustice is a supreme demonstration of love. Love for knowledge, the Greek meaning of philosophia, and love for humankind and the earth we inhabit. Love overcomes all obstacles. Throughout my journey as a student in the Department of Romance Languages, I have been fortunate to be part of a vibrant and creative community of graduate students and faculty. I'm grateful for the love and friendship I have received. However, I must also acknowledge that my dream of becoming a doctor of philosophy would not have come to fruition without the invaluable cross-pollination from other departments beyond the humanities. Their knowledge, support, and guidance have played an instrumental role in my growth. I cannot help but wonder what, what additional accomplishments we could have achieved had we not been isolated in our respective silos due to the COVID-19 pandemic. What financial and spatial constraints could administrators have overcome to further support even more intensive cross-disciplinary interactions on campus? We must remember that students seek coherent, exciting, and dynamic research fields that will empower them to effect change in the world. It is through the collective knowledge produced in the humanities and sciences that we can satiate that hunger for social and ecological justice. The world needs us. It craves our knowledge. During the year I served in the Romance Languages, Graduate Student Association as president, I learned the value of addressing precarity in the university system through collective action. We can improve our working conditions and obtain better economic compensation if our contingent faculty, postdocs, and graduate employees stand together in solidarity. <clears throat> We must also continuously emphasize the tremendous social value of our intellectual pursuits grounded in rigorous research that shapes the future. Through collaborative efforts, humanists can dispel the notion that cultural and literary studies are merely supplementary fields. We humanists produce cutting edge research and it is imperative that we change the perception surrounding the disciplines by proactively dispersing the knowledge we have created during our years here at the University of Oregon. Similarly, in all other disciplines, the notion that we have been part of a public university that makes the results of our research public should be defended and practiced. So I implore all my fellow graduates to share your work in the library repository under Creative Commons licensure so that the world at large can learn about our discoveries and recognize that our research, like the titles I cited at the beginning of my speech, respond to societal demands and are accessible to all. In conclusion, today marks a significant achievement for each one of us. Let us carry the torch of knowledge, understanding, and compassion into the world as we embark on the next phase of our lives. And congratulations to all the graduates and to your families and communities who I am sure have been crucial to supporting you and reach this important milestone. And thank you all for your dedication, passion, and unwavering commitment to the pursuit of knowledge. 
Together we can shape a better future for all. Thank you so much. Thank you, John, for those words. We are now at the main event, at the point that you've been waiting for, which is the awarding of degrees. We're going to start with master students. And master students, we will